the Sheikh said that from the sources also where uh, the interpreter will take symbols uh, is uh, the uh, the Qiyas or the analogy and striking similarities for instance the fire seeing fires the, this symbolizes trials and tests and calamities and problems that is because the fire it will destroy whatever it touches and likewise the fitna trial and turmoil this is what it does to those who are involved in it the stars uh, this is uh, a symbol for the scholars because exactly as the people uh, take the guidance for the road through the stars likewise the scholars guide the people and people become guided through them uh, if you see iron or different types of weapons this is a symbol for strength and power the sheikh said that he uh, 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 knows a man who saw in his dream that a man gave him a gift of a sword so the sheikh said, I told him, you will get money, you will get some uh, wealth. That is because here, the money is the material strength. That is, the, in our time especially, this is the strength, it's true, the uh, wealth and true having good economy. Going out from a narrow door, this is a symbol for relief becoming relieved moving from one place to another then it means you are going to move from one condition to another uh, seeing a fox in the dream this symbolizes uh, someone who is uh, deceiving deceiving a cheater uh, or cunning uh, the death of a man in the dream uh, symbolizes travel, taking a journey. That is because the dead person, his news uh, normally uh, cease. You don't hear anything from them. And the Sheikh said that uh, a man came to me that he saw in the dream that he is cutting off his mom, his mother. He's cutting her up. Uh, he's cutting her up with a, with a knife. So the Sheikh told him, you are about to travel. So the man said, Subhanallah, how did you know? So he said that the mother, usually the interpreter, the interpretation of the mother, the symbol, as a symbol, it's usually, it symbolizes you, yourself. If you saw the, mo the mother, in your, your mother in your dream, then this symbolizes you, yourself, because she is the root. She, that's where you came from, from her. As for cutting her up with the sword, then this means that your muse will be uh, cut off and this will happen because you are taking a journey, because you, you are traveling. Uh, any increase that you see in the dream, then it is praiseworthy. If you see the mammon like uh, tumors or uh, things growing up in your body or uh, if you saw yourself that you became fat in the dream this is something good any increase it means that there is goodness uh, symbolizes goodness and by this you, we are using analogy here We're using analogy and striking similarities between things uh, so this is one of the sources of tafsir, of interpreting uh, dreams or s getting symbols is to use uh, uh, analogy and striking similarities. The last source, and uh, this is the fifth one for getting uh, symbols or for interpreting the symbols in the dream is to interpret by reverse, by, what, what is, by the opposite and the reverse. Like the one who saw in himself in a dream, he saw himself afraid. 
this can be interpreted that one will be safe and secure. Or someone who saw himself crying, this is a symbol for him becoming happy. This, uh, the Sheikh said, is sometimes, of course. So, uh, explaining the dreams by opposites, this is also one of the sources of interpretation of symbols. So these are five sources that the interpreter of the dreams uh, seek help through them to give every symbol an interpretation or a specific interpretation. And these are five sources, the Quran, the Sunnah, and the language, and the uh, the uh, Qiyas, the analogy, striking similarities, and also the opposites, the opposites. Uh, so those, you have to understand these before you know how to uh, interpret dreams. تفسير الرؤيا أيها الإخوة يتم عبر خطوات وبدأنا نشير أسرار المهنة أول هذه الخطوات التمييز أن تميز بين أنواع الرؤى قد عرفنا أن الرؤى أنواع رؤيا صالحة تبشر أو تذكر رؤيا من الشيطان كابوس مفزع ورؤيا مما يحدث به المرء نفسه فانظر إلى إلى أي شيء تنتبه هذه الرؤيا التي رأيتها في المدام فإذا كنت فكرت قبل أن تنام أو أنك تفكر هذه الأيام في أمر معين فرأيته في المنام فهذا من نوع مما يحدث به المرء نفسه فليس له تفسير ليس له تفسير أو أنه حلم مفزع فإنه من الشيطان إذا قمت بأداب الرؤيا المكروهة فلن يضرك أيضا إذا رأيت أن الرؤيا تحتوي على أشياء من المحالات أو من المستحيلات فأيضا تكون من الشيطان جاء رجل إلى النبي عليه السلام وقال رأيت كأن رأسي قطع وهو يتضحرج وأنا أتبعه رأى أن رأسه قطع والرأس تجري على الأرض تضحرج وهو يجري وراء رأسه فقال النبي عليه السلام لا تحدث الناس بتلاعب الشيطان بك هذا من تلاعب الشيطان أيضا الاحتلام في المنام أيضا من الشيطان دلالة على أن هذه الرؤية لا تفسير لها بل هي من الشيطان فإذا علمت أن هذه الرؤية التي رأيتها ليست من قبل الشيطان وليست مما تفكر فيه فإذا هذه لها تفسير هذه الخطوة الأولى أن تميز بين أنواع الرؤى رؤياك التي رأيت من أي نوع هل تستحق التفسير أم لا إذا كانت من الشيطان لا تفسر إذا كانت مما تفكر فيه هذه الأيام أيضا لا تفسر الخطوة الثانية الانتقاء فالرؤيا كما أسلفت تأتي في هيئة قصة وفي هيئة حكاية وأنت تأخذ منها الرموز فقط التي ترمز إلى أشياء في الواقع فالرؤيا تشتمل على أمرين رموز ترمز إلى أشياء في الواقع و حشو أشياء أخرى حشو يعني لا قيمة لها لا تشير إلى شيء شيء محدد وكثيرا ما يأتي الواحد ويقول إنه رأيت كذا وكذا وكذا ويبدأ يقص قصة طويلة 
فأقول له هذا الرؤية تدل على كذا يقول طيب بس طب وهذا يدل على ايش؟ وهذا يدل على ايش؟ وهذا يدل على ايش؟ نصف ساعة وأنا قلت له هذه الرؤية تدل على شيء واحد هذه النصف ساعة التي بدأ يحكي فيها فقط من ذلك في هذه الرؤية رموز تدل على أشياء معينة وبقية القصة حشو لا قيمة له الخطوة الثانية تسمى الانتقاء يعني أن تضع يدك على الأمور المهمة أو على الأشياء التي ترمز إلى أمر من الأمور في الواقع وبقية الأشياء لا يكون لها تفسيرا ولا يكون لها معنى الخطوة الثالثة العرض ما هو العرض؟ يعني أنت الآن بعد التمييز وبعد الانتقاء استخرجت من هذه الرؤية رمزين ثلاثة والباقي ايش حشو فهذه الرموز تعرضها على أصول التعبير تعرضها على القرآن وعلى السنة وعلى اللغة والأسماء وعلى قياس التشبيه أو أنها تعبر بالعكس هذا يسمى ايش؟ العرض تعرض هذه الرموز على اصول التعبير على مصادر التفسير القران السنه اللغه والقياس واخيرا العكس والخطوه الرابعه التاليف ان تؤلف بين هذه التفسيرات بحيث تخرج بمعنى هذا يدل على هذا، هذا الرمز يدل على كذا، وهذا الرمز يدل على كذا، وهذا الرمز يدل على كذا، طيب لابد أن أن تؤلف أن تجمع بين هذه الرموز لكي تخرج ب تفسير مناسب، نأتي لأمثلة توضح هذه الخطوات الأربعة، من أين هذه الأمثلة نأخذها؟ من إمام هذا الفن وهو ابن سيرين رحمه الله وابن سيرين له كتاب له كتاب ينسب له وليس له الكتاب المنتشر في الأسواق أنه لابن سيرين هذا ليس لابن سيرين ابن سيرين ليس له كتب في تفسير الأحلام كما أثبت ذلك في بعض الكتب The Sheikh said, now the interpretation of the dream goes through uh, a number of steps. And the Sheikh said, by this, now we started making the secret of the trade known. The first step is to distinguish between the different types of dreams. We knew that there is a good dream that either gives you good news or warns you for something that will happen. There is a bad dream or a nightmare that is from the shaitan. And there is a dream that happens because you are basically thinking about something uh, or busy with something, so you see it in your dream. So, uh, if you uh, uh, are in these days thinking about a specific thing and you saw it in your dream, then this is part of what you are uh, busy about. It's something in your on your mind. It doesn't have a tafsir. It doesn't have an interpretation. Or if it was a nightmare, then you know that this is from the shaitan. If you uh, apply the etiquettes of bad dreams that we were taught in the sunnah, then it will not harm you. Or if you saw something that is impossible, then that is also from the shaitan. The shaykh said that there is a man who came to the Prophet وسلم, and said to him, I have seen in my dream that my head was chopped off and then it was rolling and I was 
running after after his head. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, "Do not tell the people how the shaitan is playing games with you, playing around with you." Also, if you see a wet dream, if you see a wet dream, then there is no interpretation for that. That is rather from the shaitan. So if you knew that the dream is from the shaitan, uh, then uh, is from the shaitan, uh, and uh, the dream is from something that you are thinking about, then uh, don't worry about it or don't look for a tafsir. But if it was not from the shaitan and not from something that you are uh, busy with, then this would have a tafsir, it would have an interpretation. So this is how you start. You start by knowing on distinguishing and differentiating between the different types of dreams. The second step is selection, the Sheikh said. Selection, to choose and to select. The, the dream comes in uh, a, a, like a story or a narrative. And you only uh, choose and select only the symbols. Because the dream that you see, it has two types of information. It has symbols, it has symbols that can, that can be used to interpret the dream. And it has extra information uh, that there is no meaning to it or there is nothing in it. And uh, many times the Sheikh said one would come and he will narrate a long story of a dream that he saw. And after he finishes, maybe he stays for half hour, and he mentioning the dream, I will tell him, your dream, the interpretation of it is just this. So he says, only this? What about what that thing I saw, and the other thing I saw, and the other thing I saw? So that takes half an hour of narration. But then, there are only the symbols that are important. You select them. The rest is just unbeneficial. Uh, information so you should place your hand on the important matters the important matters that symbolize or symbolize something uh, that will happen something that will happen in reality the third step the third step yeah I think uh, we need to do something about the kids and the parents the uh, third step is, uh, the Sheikh said, is the process of uh, presenting or exposing uh, those, sim those symbols that you selected. Uh, you bring those symbols and you uh, look into the principles of interpretation of the dream from the Quran and the Sunnah. Uh, the language and names and analogy and the opposites as you have learned so you take those symbols and you see what it means according to these sources the fourth step is now to combine between those interpretations of these symbols to combine between them in a way that you will come up with a meaning in a way that you will come up, come up with a meaning uh, that uh, you take this means that, and this can be interpreted as that, and then you combine between all of that to get to a conclusion uh, about uh, the interpretation, that to get a suitable interpretation. And we we'll mention uh, examples to clarify these four steps, and we will take them from Ibn Sirin, and he is the leader in terms of interpreting uh, dreams and the Sheikh said by the way he, he noted that the book that is widespread uh, that uh, says that it is the book of Ibn Sirin regarding interpretation of dreams it is not authentically uh, the, the book is not his book and there is no book for Ibn Sirin regarding the interpretation of dreams so this reference of that widespread book ومترجم أيضا بالإنجليزية تفسير الأحلام بن سيرين مترجم بالإنجليزية
the, the one in Arabic and it's translated also in English, the Sheikh said that this book that is widespread and it says that it's for Ibn Sirin is not really authored by Ibn Sirin and he doesn't have a book uh, interpretation of dreams. أما عن الأمثلة أيها الأخوة التي توضح هذه الخطوات أو تلك الآلية فهذا رجل أتى ابن سيرين وقال رأيت في المنام أني عفوا قال خطبت امرأة ثم رأيتها في المنام سوداء قصيرة الرجل خطب امرأة وهذه المرأة بيضاء وطويلة فرأى في المنام أنها سوداء وقصيرة هذه رؤية طيبة كما سوف يأتي فقال ابن سيرين هذه امرأة عمرها قصير فتموت وترثها فما فلم تلبث المرأة إلا قليلا حتى ماتت وورثها الرجل بعض الناس اتمنى شيء من هذا لكن نحن طبعا نسأل الله أن يطيل أعمار زوجاتنا حتى لا يغضب فكيف فسر ابن سيرين هذه الرؤيا؟ هذه الرؤيا فيها رمزان قال رأيتها يعني مخطوبة سوداء وقصيرة السواد في المنام يعبر بالمال ففي لغة العرب فلان له سواد يعني له مال كثير السواد في لغة العرب يعني المال الكثير وقصر بدن المرأة عبره بقصر العمر وهذا في دلالة القياس ففي هذه الرؤية رمزان الأول السواد يرمز إلى المال والغنى هذا أخذه بدلالة اللغة والثاني قصر المرأة عبره بقصر العمر وهذا أخذه بدلالة القياس ثم ألف ابن سيرين بين هذين الرمزين وقال له هذه المرأة التي خطبتها سوف تموت وترثها فكان كما قال ابن سيرين رحمه الله رجل قص علي رؤيا قال رأيت نفسي وأنا طويل بين الناس قلت له ما شاء الله عمرك طويل أخذت بدلالة القياس فطول البدن يعبر بطول العمر وهو ما شاء الله الآن ما شاء الله عايش الله يستر عليه ناخذ مثال آخر لكنه مثال عجيب وغريب جاء رجل إلى ابن سيري وقال رأيت على رأسي تاجا من ذهب تات الرؤيا رأيت على رأسي تاجا من ذهب فقال ابن سيرين إن أباك في أرض غربة وقد ذهب بصره عمي ويأمرك بالإتيان إليه فأخرج الرجل رسالة من أبيه يذكر فيه في هذه الرسالة أنه قد عمي ويقول له تعال إلي لكي 
تاخذ لي كيف فسرها المسيرين كيف فسرها المسيرين رايت على راسي تاجا من ذهب هذه الرؤيه فيها ثلاثه رموز الراس والتاج والذهب الراس عبره المسيرين ب الأب عبره ب الأب فالرأس رئاسة ورئيس الإنسان ايش؟ أبوه أليس كذلك؟ الرأس هذه تعبر بالأب والتاج تاج من ألبسة العرب أم من ألبسة العجم أو غير العرب من ألبسة العجم العرب يلبسون هذه او العمامه لكن العجم يلبسونه التجان لا تعرف من القديم على عين المسيرين والذهب عبره ابن سيرين بذهاب البصر ثم الف ابن بين هذه الرموز وقال له ايش؟ ان اباك في ارض غربه لان التاج من البسة ايش؟ العجم اذا ابوه في ارض غربه في ارض العجم ليس في ارض العرب. وقد ذهب بصره اخذها من الذهب. ان اباك في ارض غربه وقد ذهب بصره ويامرك بالاتيان اليه، هذا طبعا من الفراسه ما دام ذهب بصره فلا بد انه يرسل الى ولده لكي ايش؟ يامره بالاتيان اليه. فمباشرة أخرج هذا الرجل رسالة من أبيه فيها كل ما ذكره ابن سيرين سبحان الله هذه بعض الأمثلة لكي نعرف كيف تفسر الأحلام The chef said now we come to uh, examples that will clarify uh, the uh, man came to Ibn Sirin, one man, and he said, I proposed to a woman to get married to her. Then I saw her in my dream to be uh, black and short, while she is actually white and tall. So Ibn Sirin told him that this is a woman who will uh, live a short life. She will die and he will inherit her. So that woman, just shortly after she passed away, and truly the man inherited her. The Sheikh said that some people might wish for this to happen. But we ask Allah to elongate, to make the lives of our wives long, inshallah. The Sheikh said, now how did he explain this? This story or this dream has two symbols the uh, symbol of her being black and this black color in the dream is interpreted to be wealth or money and this is taken from the Arabic language if you say he has sawad the word black then he has a lot of money so he took that from the language as for her being short this is the sec second symbol he took the meaning of short to be, or sim as a symbol, to mean that her life will be short. And this is by analogy, by analogy. So her short, so she, will sh uh, she is short-lived, right? So here, uh, the color black is wealth. He took that from the language. And her being short, this is short in life. Uh, and he took that from analogy. Then he combined between these two symbols and he knew that this woman that the man proposed to, she will die and he will inherit her and it was like what he said. The Sheikh said, a man came to me and he told me that he saw himself to be very tall, tall and very tall. So I told him, يعني, mashallah, your life will be long and the Sheikh said he is still living and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> you know, keep him in a good condition. Another uh, man came to Ibn Sirin and he said to him 
uh, I saw on me, I saw myself uh, wearing a crown on my head, a crown of gold. Hmm? Taj is a crown, right? Yeah. Crown of gold. So on his head. So Ibn Sirin told him that your father, he is in a, a land where he is, is not, not the land of the Arabs, uh, he's away traveling and he became blind and he is ordering you to come to him. So the man, he took out a letter that he received from his father that was saying just that that uh, come to me to pick me up because I became blind and I am, you know, in such and such country outside of the uh, Arab land. So the Sheikh said that in this story there is three symbols, the head, the crown, and the gold. As for the head, this symbolizes the father because the head, it symbolizes one who has a chief position, symbolizes the chief. And the father is the chief of the son. And as for the crown, then the crown is not the type of uh, thing that the Arabs used to wear. It was actually the non-Arabs that used to wear it. The Arabs would wear a da'imam or something like a turban. And this is of course in the past. So he knew from that that he is away. He is not in the land, in, in the Arab land. As for the gold, Zahab, then he interpreted that from, uh, he interpreted that symbol to mean that his uh, eyesight uh, would be blinded, his eyes would be, become blind, and this is the word Zahab, it, in Arabic it means gold, and it means to also go away and depart. So. He combined between all of these symbols and he came up with the interpretation that your father is in a non-Arab land and he is, uh, he is blind, he became blind and he is ordering you to come to pick him up. Now the fact that he says he's telling you to come pick him up, this is what is called firasa. Firasa, I can say, is like being sharp being sharp uh, in uh, getting uh, a conclusion. So here, so he uh, knew that his father is in need of him, so he told him that your father is asking you to come and pick him up. <laughs> كلمة يسيرة وهي أنه ينبغي على المفسر أن يلاحظ القواعد التي قررها علماء التفسير والقواعد كثيرة منها على سبيل المثال أن الرؤية أحيانا تحتمل معنيين متضادين أو تحتمل تفسيرين مختلفين على سبيل المثال الجراد قد يعبر بالأموال وقد يعبر بالعذاب الأذان قد يعبر بالحد وقد يعبر بالسرقة فإذا كان الرؤية تحتمل معنيين أو تفسيرين فينبغي على المعبر أن يتأنى وأن يتثبت حتى يعرف التفسير التفسير الصحيح الذي يليق بهذا الرد أيضا من القواعد أن الرؤيا تنتقل من الزوجة إلى الزوج أو العكس تنتقل من الأب إلى الطفل أو العكس تنتقل من الأخ إلى الأخ أو من الصديق إلى الصديق ما معنى ذلك؟ أضرب لكم مثلا تصل بي امرأة قالت رأيت أن ولدي الصغير 
وعمره سنتان قد غرق في حمام السباحة في البيت والمرأة خائفة وفزعة ولدها الوحيد وتعرفون حال الأم خائفة على ولدها اتضح لي أن التفسير لا يليق بالولد وإنما يليق بالأرض فالغرق في المنام معناه الغرق في المعاصي والذنوب كما قال ربنا مما خطيئاتهم أغرقوا فالغرق في المنام يعبر أو يفسر بالغرق في الذنوب والأثام يعني أن هذا الرجل مفتوم ولذلك سألتها عن الأرض يعني سألتها عن زوجها فقالت زوجي يشرب الخمر ويفعل كذا ويفعل كذا فقلت لها لا تخافي على ولدك هذه الرؤيا معناها أن زوجك رجل مفتون صاحب معاصي كما ذكرت أنت فاطمأنت على ولدها فالرؤيا إذا رؤية في الولد لكنني نقلتها إلى الأب مثلا الزوجة رأت في المنام مثلا أنها قد تزوجت والزواج في المنام أحيانا يعبر به وظيفة جديدة لكن هذه الوظيفة الجديدة لا تليق بالزوجة فننقل هذه الرؤية من الزوجة إلى زوجها وهكذا وهذا من قواعد التفسير أيضا رأى رجل رؤيا وكان معنى الرؤيا أن أموالا كثيرة تأتي لكنها سبحان الله لم تأتي لهذا الرهب وإنما أتت إلى صديقه أو الرؤيا يرى الأخ فتفسر لأخيه لماذا؟ لأن الرؤيا لا تليق بهذا الإنسان فتنقل إلى الشبيه كالصديق أو الأخ أو من له به علاقة الزوجة زوجها أو الأب أو الطفل الأب هكذا قرر العلماء أيضا من القواعد المهمة التي نختم بها حتى لا نطيل أن الرؤيا تفسيرها يختلف باختلاف الأديان باختلاف اللغات باختلاف البلاد وباختلاف الزمان باختلاف العادات باختلاف الأماكن باختلاف الوظائف ولذلك من المهم جدا أن تعرف عادات كل بلد وأن تعرف دين الرأي فرجل يأكل لحم الخنزير مثلا إذا كان نصرانيا هذا يعبر بالرزق لكن الذي رأى الرؤيا مسلم تعبره بالرزق؟ لا تعبره بأنه يأكل مالا حراما الرؤية تختلف باختلاف العادات ومثلا حلق اللحية حلق اللحية في المنام يختلف من واحد إلى آخر بالنسبة للرجل المرتحي يعبر بالهم والغم وأنه سوف يقابل بعض المشاكل وهذا كثيرا ما يحدث يتصل الناس ويقولون رأينا فلانا ما شاء الله صاحب دين قد حلق لحيته فيحسب ان حلق اللحيه انتكاسه فاقول له اتصل على فلان اخيك هذا سوف تراه انه يمر بازمه وفعلا يكون كذلك حلق اللحيه بالنسبه للمرتحي مشاكل او هم وهم لكن بالنسبه للحليق بالنسبه للحليق فرح وسرور وخير كيف ذلك؟ لان العاده اذا الإخوة الذين يحلقون لحاهم عندما 
يذهبون في مناسبة فتجدون إيش؟ يلمعونها طبعا مع احترامنا لإخواننا ف واللحية يعني واجب لكن على أي حال ليس هذا موضوع إيش؟ المحاضرة ما أدري وأنا طفش اللي عنده حساسية يا شيخ هذه مسألة أخرى هذه مسألة أخرى الآن نتكلم في تفسير الأحلام ونحترم الجميع ونحب الجميع احنا كلنا يعني مسلمون مؤمنون يحب بعضنا بعضا وكلنا مقصرون الملتحي مقصر والحريق أيضا مقصر كلنا مقصرون ليست هذه قضيتنا لكن جرت العادة أن الحريق عندما يذهب إلى مناسبة يلمع فلذلك الحليق اذا رؤية انه يحلق اللحيه معناه فرح وسرور الحلق يختلف من واحد الى اخر وهكذا فالتفسير يختلف باختلاف الاديان باختلاف العادات باختلاف الوظائف الرؤيه التي يراها الطبيب غير الرؤيه التي يراها مثلا المدرس لكل واحد رؤيا تناسبه القواعد كثيرة لكننا نكتفي بذلك ونحمد الله جل وعلا أننا قد أعطيناكم جرعة طيبة في موضوع تفسير الأحلام نسأل الله جل وعلا أن ينفع بما سمعتم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد طبعا بعد الترجمة نعم إن شاء الله إحنا بكرة عندنا مزال أيضا هناك مزال أيوة نعم نقفل غدا إن شاء الله عندنا أيضا الأسئلة بعد الظهر يعني الأسئلة غدا إن شاء الله يعني وطول إن شاء الله صلاة الظهر الشيخ said that I feel that I went on for a long time so therefore I will try to conclude by a short uh, speech or short words. It is upon the interpreter of the dream to take care of the principles uh, that the scholars of interpretation of dream have uh, established. Uh, part of that is the dream might carry two opposing or two opposite inter interpretations. Like what you heard, the locust, it could be wealth, it could be punishment, adam, call to prayer, could be hajj, or could be stealing. So, uh, since the dream might carry two interpretations, then it is upon the interpreter to slow down, to take his time, and to make sure. And he should know the correct uh, uh, tafsir, he should know the correct tafsir, and part of the principles of the tafsir, the, the, the explaining the dream, is that the dream could be moved, switched from, uh, yani interpreting the dream could be switched from the husband to, uh, to the, from the wife to the husband or the opposite, from the son to the father and the opposite, the brother to another brother and the opposite and one friend to the other and the opposite. Uh, meaning that you see the dream for the husband and it suits the wife, or the wife and actually it suits the husband. So we interpret it for the husband, not the wife. Although the dream says the wife, unlike that. The chef said that, for example, one woman called me and he said that my small child, who is two years old, I saw him in a dream that he drowned in the swimming pool at home and she was very scared and that was her only son and she was very much afraid for him the sheikh said that it became clear to me that the interpretation does not suit the son rather it suits the father so uh, the sheikh said that in the Quran uh, يعني, the ayah says because of, of their sins, they were made to drown. 
Allah caused them to drown because of their sins. So when someone drowns, if you see someone drowning in the dream, then this could be interpreted to mean that he falls into sins. He is immersed into sins, into committing sins. So the Sheikh said, I asked the wife about her husband. She said he is drinking intoxicants and he does this and a lot of disobediences. So the Sheikh said, I told her, don't fear for your child. This uh, dream uh, is actually for uh, your husband. It means that your husband is committing a lot of sins and disobediences. So she saw in the dream, in the vision, she saw uh, actually the son, but the interpretation was switched and moved to the father. Uh, for instance, the wife also, she might see that she got married. She's already married. She, still, she sees that she got married in the dream. Now, marriage could be interpreted to mean a job, a new job. But then, this new job does not suit the wife. So, we switch it to her husband. Meaning that she saw in the dream she, that she got married. The marriage is... Uh, a new job, so now her husband will get a new job. Another one saw a man, for instance, uh, that a lot of money, uh, he will get a lot of money. But then it doesn't happen to him. But then maybe it happens to his friend or to his brother. So we interpret the dream that he saw for himself, we switch it for his brother or his friend, and likewise, uh, wife, we switch it to the husband, the son, we switch the dream uh, to the uh, father. And uh, one of the principles of interpreting dreams is that the dream, the interpretation of the dream may differ according to the difference in religions, in languages, countries, time, habits, places, jobs. So it is very important to know the habits and the religion. If someone saw in a dream that he is eating pork, for instance, while he is a Christian, we say, we interpret this to mean that he will get some sort of a provision, rizq. But if the one who saw the dream is a Muslim, then we interpret this that he will be falling into sin, into haram. Also, the habits. For instance, shaving the beard for someone who has a beard, this would be interpreted to mean uh, worry and grief or sadness and some problems happening to him. And many times people call me and they say, I saw so-and-so shaving his beard or his beard shaved. They think that maybe now this person, he became a practicing Muslim, they think because they saw him in the dream like this, they say maybe he will go back to his old ways. He's not practicing anymore. But I tell them, the Sheikh said, I tell them, give him a call and he will find that he's going through some sort of problems. And they call and they find it like that. Now this is for the one who has a beard. What about the one who does not have a beard, who shaves his beard? Now this, the interpretation of that is that he will have uh, a happy occasion or he will receive some sort of a goodness. How come? How is this? That is because the Sheikh said the habit of those who shave their beards is that uh, when there is a happy occasion they usually take care to brighten up, to really look groomed, right? The Sheikh said we respect all our brothers who are here uh, and we know that growing a beard is, is compulsory in Islam for the men but we, uh, that's not our subject, that's not our topic now and we, not, we do not want to run away our customers uh, the sheikh, uh, one of the brothers, he said what about if you have allergies? You know, uh, so the sheikh said that we, uh, that's a different subject and we uh, respect uh, all and we love all and all of us are deficient, all of, us, all of us are deficient. Those who have beards, they are deficient. And the brothers who are shaving, they are deficient also. 
But anyhow, this is basically what happens. The habit of those who shave their beards is usually they uh, shave especially in happy occasions. So now the dream, because it, someone who shaves his beard is the one who saw that he shaves his beard, then it's interpreted as an occasion of happiness or something joyful that will happen to him. So the interpretation differs according to the different people. Likewise, in terms of jobs, the dream that uh, a medical doctor sees is different, inter uh, is given a different interpretation than the dream that the teacher sees, and like that. So this is one of the principles, and uh, the Sheikh said that we mentioned here some briefly some of the, the, the principles, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit by what was mentioned, and uh, then I reminded the Sheikh and I remind you that tomorrow we will be here after Dhuhr, inshallah ta'ala, Salat al Dhuhr, 1 o'clock, and then after uh, Salat al Dhuhr, the Sheikh will be with us here, and we, have, we will have a session uh, with him, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah, come along tomorrow, and uh, let us continue this subject, and there will be a chance for asking questions, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha 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 il